This is a little rushed. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's 2012, and there's a lot of things happening in the world. And this is the real thing here. This can run a, be a part of a duel that run a car, while the other one's still a prototype, which I'll finish. I got all the components for the other one later. So I'm going to show you these double magnets and the new thin drivers. This is just one driver of one fiber that's only three quarters of an inch thick, but I made the center wider. Center is an inch thick. So it's basically pretty similar to the magnets. The magnets are an inch and a half by uh, an inch, the two together, and the uh, thing is two inches by one inch. So uh, because of the uh, coils, it's, uh, it measures half, so it extends over the magnet. Okay. Okay, I had this up to 2,000 a couple days ago, and it accelerated faster than it's accelerating now, but it's accelerating. And I mounted this on a sunny VCR drive with the mechanism taken out. And from 2,000, I timed it from 2,000 revs to stillness. It took 14 minutes. While with the cogging mechanism of the computer in, it was only four or five minutes for it to go dead. So now it's going faster. As you can see, it's now growing 12, 1500. There, it's approaching 2000 now. Okay, now what I'm going to do next. Yeah, there it's going. See how I'm drawing it back a little bit? And it's going faster when I draw it back. Okay, I'm going to lift it up and turn it off. I'm turning both switches off. And you can see, it'll still be pouring out energy turned off. It's the centrifugal force and the lack of friction that allow it to turn off. And at the same time, these pickups, which have the core removed upward so that they don't interfere and influence the spin, will turn on. So they're gathering energy all the time in capacitors and when this turns off, this turns on and it goes into the battery and recharges. So your whole trip becomes a trip where the electric eye turns it off at 2000 and turns it back on at uh, tw uh, 1200. Back and forth, back and forth. Charging the batteries, dispelling the batteries, charging the batteries, dispelling the batteries, and the tower running the wheels. And the uh, 
the key here was to make the core wide. So we can come back and see if this is charging, is charging the uh, capacitors in, in a few minutes. Here you can see this one was the first one and I was going to put drivers underneath my old big drivers before I figured out the short and fat ones. And uh, it started to shake very badly at 800, 1,000, right? And it got very scary. You know, and it pulled up the drivers, so there has to be a huge block, you know. So it, it didn't make sense because, and also it slows down. I didn't know about the cogging being such a factor at the time. Now, here's what I'm using and how I was able to solve that problem. You can see here a collection of uh, a ferrite core material gotten from uh, all kinds of uh, computer monitors and TVs and whatnot. Sometimes a surprise. Here's my scrap pile with more of them and whatnot. And uh, so uh, these are called EMI shields. And by the way, this is why the uh, Russian Mars mission crashed, is because they didn't put enough EMI shielding in. It's a big factor to the military, especially with the sun cycle, you know, having solar storms lately and so on and so forth, you know. So it's, uh, with plasma screens coming in, they're throwing away all the old ones. They peaked in about 2007 and 2008 with 17 inch uh, computer monitors, you know, the shielding. So I got most of these uh, various rings from that. Well, these uh, core things are in every TV and every uh, uh, monitor and so on. I, first of all, I can see if it actually doesn't stop it. Actually, it seemed to have an effect there. What do you think? Do you think it slowed it down? It's going to 327,085 uh, volt capacitors. I'm going to turn on the other one to make it go faster. You know? See, the trouble is that I, I spent so much time gluing in, fastening in the uh, cores that I tried to uh, use my sledgehammer to take out a core last night of my biggest one, uh, you know, thousands of uh, wines, and I broke one of those uh, ones that I was building, you know, of the tape. Is it going up? Because it's definitely going faster, right? See, this is only 50 turns of number 22 wire. So it's a very thick wire with very few turns. So, you know, it's, it's not going to make a very high voltage. Uh, I, I'll probably take it apart and wind it with uh, 800 or 1,000. This uh, generator uh, coils are different from drive coils, you know, as you can see, you know, and uh, with generator coils, uh, they use thin wire if it's AC, uh, uh, what do you call it, three-phase, like the tower I'm using, it saves, uh, I think, a third of the thickness of the wire. And the people who, do, who advocated on the net, the electronics guys, heavier wire, were actually trying to make drivers, you know, and they were using more and more energy, and it wasn't very effective because they were trying to get out the width, 
while they were staying thick. And it's too bad that Mueller died before... There, see, it's really going now, right? So it should be going over 3 volts by now. So it's really working right here. What do you think? See, that's 2,000. So we got to. I got to decide whether I'm going to have two drivers or one driver, and how many of the things, and how far, and how many uh, coils I'll put. But basically, the idea that it charges uh, the the magnets, charge the batteries, and also like uh, uh, produce the. Oh, look at that! It's starting to vibrate, huh? And the towers on a truck can be like the exhaust pipes near a semi now. The same height, except they'll be magnetic generators, a stack of magnetic generators. The same diameter, it's about six inches, four to six inches. And the, uh, even the same weight. But the, the new technology doesn't let metals sit around and do nothing, just be structural uh, strength or tinsel strength like old bridges or something. They participate in energy production to one degree or another. The super paranetic material, because if we can, we, the aliens are freed. This is a, probably coming from the aliens into my head because the psychologists want to tell you, oh, it's either yourself or it's God. You know, the priest tell you, no, I, I myself didn't have these ideas. Oh, well, you were still read them in books. No, a lot of these I didn't read in books. You see what I mean? So, you know, they used to say, oh, angels, demons, blah, blah, blah. But when you look back at Zoroaster and the Persians from thousands of years ago, these different celestial beings that weren't called angels at the time, they were associated with different star systems, right? and with different capabilities. It sounds a lot like they're describing different alien cultures that they really knew. But, of course, they're dumb. They're primitive. We are the peak of it. We know everything, right? This is, is the propaganda, right, that appeals to people's, like, brutal animal ignotism. So that my point is that we're liberating the atom here so that it's hanging in space, free to, like, uh, take on a magnetic charge from any direction. And there's, there's wireless uses of this, and there's power uses of this, because each time it's giving up the core here, it's magnetism and changing it. Thou hundreds and thousands of times a second, right? So that's 2,000 RPMs. And it's maintaining the... Uh, the 50 uh, turns of heavy wire are maintaining the three capacitors, even though they're not uh, actually uh, building the... Because uh, the more turns you put on, the, the more output. And, of course, you can you do these in series. Okay, I'm turning... I, it's off now, and you can see it's still spinning. It's still putting out energy. The pickups are still working, right? It's the driver that stopped. And that's the basis of, even though this isn't levitation that I spent with my turbine some time with, right, developing, and other labs have developed this, you know, this, the friction is so minimal and makes a lot of difference. Uh, if it was only uh, 30 seconds or a minute for your charge to go on to your batteries, it probably wouldn't be able to maintain them. But when it's four or five minutes, it can maintain them very easily. You can put them in series, you know, two sets in series or individual, uh, probably 80 volts for 60 volt systems and 60 volts for 48 volt systems. They got to be quite a bit higher because, uh, you know, they need some pressure to go into the battery not too much pressure because they, they would, would overcharge it, but they can't overcharge it because, you see, 
they're cutting off like a smart charger. After four or five minutes, they turn off and the, uh, and the driver turns on. Yeah, and they go only to the, uh, to the capacitors then, storing to the capacitors. So this is electronic switching that does it, and I assume that uh, this is what the, the Japanese and Chinese are introdu want to introduce and are introducing these vehicles, and the U.S. oil people and military are going crazy. And uh, Benjamin uh, uh, Fulford on the net just in the last two or three days uh, announced that they were like planting atomic bombs off the east coast of Japan to wipe out Japan and Tokyo with a tsunami. And I don't know what forces blocked it or stopped it or whatever, but there's all kinds of conflicts going on, you know. And it seems like the, uh, the old guard, the old uh, bankster uh, plutocrats of the West have been issuing enormous amounts of money and and devaluing and de derivatives. It's all been for about oil. They sold the derivatives to pay for the oil, so they paid for worthless paper. And uh, they let the Japanese build build it by by buildings in the 80s when they were thing. And the Chinese wanted to build uh, buy land and buildings and resources, and they didn't want them to. So what they did is sold these derivatives to five or six different people and then tie them all up in court. But, you know, it comes time to pay, and they don't have the money, and they still need more oil. So, you know, now it's all breaking down, you know. So uh, they start a war, you know, and uh, the resistance has grown by leaps and bounds, you know.